Hey, what's going on? Welcome. If you are new here, please subscribe and click the notification bell, share to all your social media. If you're returning, welcome back. So from season two, episode six, titled Pas de deux. And it means a dance for two people, typically a man and a woman. In French, it means step of two. And we saw two types of dances or steps for two. That was Boyd and the ballerina, and then Boyd with the smiley creature. And I believe that's where Boyd got the idea from to put the worms into the smiley creature from interacting with the ballerina. Boyd was the only one who was O negative had to be a part of a blood transfusion with Ellis. I thought Boyd was going to be giving him the worms. And then Kenny stepped up to take the worms. I'm like, man, it might be a good thing to give these other people worms so they can see what you're seeing. But I like what Boyd chose to do. That was really gutsy and really risky. I didn't know how that was going to end. I thought it was a great episode. Best of the season, if not maybe the series. Because it was really good and we learned a lot of information. So... I believe Christy and Marielle will perform an autopsy on the smiley creature. Boyd's going outside. He's calling them out. He wants the smoke. The smiley creature walks out first. And I think the smiley creature might have been like a leader because everybody else seems to be moving with a group or moving with two or more. Maybe it could be just the way I've seen a couple of scenes, but the smiley creature and the woman that was kissing that one guy and then like took his tongue out. They're the only ones that have been moving by themselves. So I think that some of them are like alphas when the creature walks out and Instead of him going directly to Boyd, he walks out to the center and then faces Boyd. One alpha or leader facing another. See, he comes out, he goes to the center of the road, then faces, turns to him and stops. Boyd is like, what are you waiting on? Come on. The smiley creature sees that he has something in his hand. They're having a stare off. In other episodes, when someone sees the creature, they usually start running or screaming or they're kind of like afraid or they're close enough to attack because they're doing this whole face off. And the fact that the creatures believe that this is one big game, I think the creature is wondering, what is this guy going to do? And the creature is relishing the moment, kind of like someone who relishes the hunt. They don't just go and just delete someone or something. They kind of enjoy the moment. I think the creature, while smiling, of course, is enjoying the moment and enjoying being able to go and get his kill. Next, I think the smiley creature was waiting for backup to make sure that he can't run away. They probably have experienced this in the past where someone's like going to challenge them and then runs off somewhere. And now they're like slow walking and they might not be able to catch him. So he's waiting on his backup to surround the guy, which is smart. It's kind of like what pack animals will do. They'll surround their prey. Then they'll close in on them to prevent them from escaping. Yep. There she go. Then there comes another one and they probably are able to communicate with each other through howling and making noises and whatnot. And that's how they knew to surround the guy here. There's another one and the other one. They're all surrounding like pack animals. Now that they're all in position, now the smiley creature, the alpha is moving in for the attack. So the smiley creature stops once Boyd pulls out the knife. I think the smiley creature stopped to see what Boyd was going to do, because to them, this is just a game and they're like playing. I don't know if you've ever dealt with bullies or been in a situation where someone wants to harm you and they believe or feel that they're superior to you. Well, in a situation like that, they're toying with you, even though they're bullying you, they're toying with you and having fun and amusement at your expense. If it gets to a point where you have not stood up for yourself and you've been running from them and hiding from them and you go to stand up for yourself to confront them, they're gonna stop in their tracks to see what you're going to do. And they're gonna look at you in your eyes to see if you have fear in you or not. The alpha is stopping to see what Boyd is gonna do because I believe that it's possible for a person to overpower and overwhelm the creatures so they're kind of cautious in making sure that he doesn't delete them in a way that 
causes them to be deleted permanently. They do take damage. There hasn't been any evidence that they bleed, but they do take damage. And if they can take damage, that means they can be maimed or deleted. Uh, what you waiting for? You want it? Most of the time, whenever the creatures get in striking distance, they shapeshift to their real form and they attack, kind of like how they did Father Katri. But in this situation, the smiley creature is not attacking because I believe the smiley creature is curious as to what Boyd is going to do. Pasty. So Boyd took a slice or a swipe at the creature's neck. What did the creature do in response? He jumped backwards. This is a reflex because if you remove the head, then the creature can be deleted. And the creatures know that. That's the reason why the smiley creature instinctively jumped backwards away from Boyd as to avoid damage. Even though the creature has been cut, there's no blood or anything coming out of the wound. They may not have any liquids inside of them, but I believe that when Christy and Marielle do the autopsy, they'll be able to see for sure how the creatures operate when they are shot or cut. As we see on the screen, there's nothing oozing out, but whatever is inside of them is visible. So it did take damage. And so decapitating them may be the main way to eliminate them. This is the first time we've ever seen a creature do self-preservation. Most of the time when someone picks up a firearm and shoots it, the creature just takes damage. Creature smiling. He stopped smiling as Boyd went in for the swipe. And now look at the facial expression. This is the teeth grimacing. Meaning the smiley creature showing fear, but also showing signs of pain. And when Boyd stood there to see what the creature was gonna do, that's when the creature went back into offense mode. See, creature was not smiling after taking damage, receiving pain, and seeing that Boyd wasn't gonna go any further. And now look at the creature's eyes. This is the facial expression of someone who is showing aggression. Like, okay, you had your turn to attack me, now I'm gonna return the favor. My blood is your blood. So the creature is just there letting Boyd do whatever he wants. I think the creature is just curious. And that's the reason why the creature is not morphing and attacking and everybody else is just standing around looking. I think these creatures are not really just simply hunting, but they're also learning and they're curious about their prey. And the creature can feel the worms going inside of it. And then once the creature realizes that's it, it's over, the creature goes back to smiling. The creature smiles when they close in on their prey. They morph when they're about to attack and they have no facial expression while they're looking for someone or something. So we have just seen a fourth sign that we haven't seen before in the show and that's fear and another one would be aggression. I like this game. They're all like bullies, toying with their food, toying with their prey, toying with something that's weaker than them. Uh, 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 uh. When Boyd put the worms inside of the neck, now we're starting to see that the wound Boyd created has increased. Human teeth. Ha! <laughs> Got him! <he>. Ha! <laughs> Very interesting how the eyelids go up and not go down like ours. The worms, or maybe even Boyd's blood being O negative, causing the smiley creature to have a seizure. The creature's looking like it's having a stroke. Either it's a stroke or a seizure. Just by looking at their faces, they're just as confused as we are. They don't know what's going on. Cowboy creature and blonde hair creature, they're both looking at each other. These two will look at each other. They don't know what's going on. This has probably never happened before. This was a glitch in the matrix. She looks worried. He looks concerned. 
They're all turning to each other to see if the other one knows what this is. And the answer is no, everybody's confused. If these creatures have been here for thousands of years, this is the first time anyone has been able to make them do that thing, which was the smiley creature having a seizure. Yeah, they're all in disbelief. They're all still staring at each other. Yeah, they don't know what to do. And they just leave them there. If this whole thing is one experiment or one game, they were probably given instructions on how it was supposed to work. Maybe like when new creatures are created, the creatures that are already there are like, this is what we do. And the alpha being eliminated makes the rest of them just discombobulated. Now these two are looking at each other like, what's going on? These two looking at each other, they don't know what to do. This is not a part of the program. And after they're done not understanding what to do, they all go in separate directions. They probably have their own territorial areas where they live. They going back home. We just took a L. Yeah, you did take a L. You did take a L. If I was one of the people inside the building, I would have came outside and see, do they still want to play? Now they have the ability to gain more information because once the sun comes up, if the body deteriorates in the sun, then they know they can't exist in the sun. What's scary is the creatures are going to start adapting. Before the talismans, they were opening doors, they were howling at each other, they were less advanced than they are now. Introduce the talismans in response, now they're talking and they're persuasive. So now that they've been able to delete one of them, I believe the creatures are going to start either picking up objects and throwing them, running, or throwing things into the structures to try to get the talismans to fall. People online are saying this is a good thing, but this is actually a bad thing because every time the people advance or have some type of advantage offensively, the creatures respond in kind. So I'm sure at one point the creatures didn't even shapeshift, but as people started bringing vehicles, the creatures probably started wearing clothes. As people started getting firearms, the creatures probably had like an advancement where they're more durable to damage. And now that one has been actually deleted, the creatures are about to get an upgrade. Oh, they're about to get an upgrade. The town may become angry and respond. In a previous episode, when Tabitha was digging the hole and went down there, the house collapsed, the rain destroyed their equipment or damaged it, and the crops are not as plentiful. And then there's no livestock in the forest. The town is gonna respond in kind and it's gonna be harder. I don't think it's meant for them to actually thrive against the creatures or even succeed and be able to defeat them. I think the object is for them to sacrifice each other or delete each other. When Boyd Ellis and Boyd's wife first came to the town and she started to mass delete people, Boyd went into the forest and found the livestock. Boyd accidentally found the talisman. When Boyd's wife was going around deleting people with her firearm, that's when Boyd went into the forest and found the livestock. And they were saying they don't know where the livestock came from. What the town and the powers that be want is for the characters to delete or sacrifice each other. Kind of like how back in the Bible days, people would sacrifice livestock or a person as a burnt offering, and then you'd be blessed in return. So I think the same rules apply here, where if you sacrifice people, you get, quote unquote, blessed. This right here is going to make things very, very hard. And eventually they got to go into the forest and leave the town. That's the only way they're going to be able to make it if they continue on this path. But I do believe Christy and Marielle will perform an autopsy on the corpse. I think the sun's going to come in and kind of burn or destroy the corpse. So it's not going to be much to really deal with. We'll see. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. Thumbs up the video. Share your social media. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. Share everywhere. 
Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Go forth, do great things, and I'm out. Peace.